In this tutorial, we are going to extract background colors and font colors in Google Sheets using some Google Apps Script magic. So here's the end result of what we'll be doing today or in this session. On our left hand side, we have a list of co-op board games and we want to get the background color that we've set for the, each one of those games. And then in column C, we want to display the font color we have for those games. And then finally in column D, we want to combine the background and the font color and display both. To get cracking, go into extensions and click on app scripts to get into the Google app script IDE and we'll get started. Now, if you want to play along and I encourage that you do, there is a copy of this starter sheet here in the description in the link below or in the side these days uh, for you to access and play along. Okay, let's dive in. So first thing we want to do is change my function into something more understandable. So let's click on my function and change that to display column BG calls. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm going to hard code in the values and ranges that we're going to use here, but I recommend that you use parameters in your own projects to bring them in. It just makes it easier for this tutorial for you to understand what's going on. So let's get cracking. We need to add three things here. The first one is going to be the range that we want to reference, which is going to be this, this column A here, and then the sheet tab, which is sheet one, and then the offset that we want to display the background colors in. So let's create a constant variable. That's one that doesn't change, and we'll call that range A1 is equal to, and we'll use A1 notation here, which means A1 notation is the letter across the column, followed by the row, followed by a colon, and then repeat for the range. So for us, we want A3 to A12. So let's add that in. So A3 to A12. Cool. Next. Next, we have a sheet name. So we'll call this sheet name, and that's going to be our sheet one now. Uh, it's probably good practice just to go down and double click the sheet name, hit control C and control V to paste it in so you don't make any mistakes. And lastly, we want the offset. So const offset. Now there's a couple of approaches that you could use here. You could just re-grab the range for column B. Um, I just want to play with offset today. Offset basically means how many columns across do you want to create a new range to add in those values? So this offset is going to be a column offset. Cool. So now we need to grab our spreadsheet data from spreadsheet apps, the spreadsheet itself, and then the range. So let's go ahead and do that now. So const ss equals spreadsheet app dot get active. So you can use get active or get active spreadsheet here. And that's going to get the spreadsheet that we're currently running in. If you want to use another spreadsheet, you could use uh, open by ID or open by URL. And then we want to now grab the sheet. So const sheet is equal to spreadsheet. So SS, that's our constant variable above, get sheet by name. And what's the name? That's going to be the sheet name. Cool. Nice. So finally we now finally now we need to get the range. So const range. So that's that A1 range notation. And that's going to be done. That's in the sheet. And now we can use the get range of that sheet and grab this range A1. Now that we have the range with this range constructor, we can grab its background color. So we can say const BG calls for background colors for, for those for column A, and we'll say range dot get back grounds. Now there's two here. There's one that says back, get background here. That's only going to get you the first cell of the range. We want the plural get backgrounds. So if you find yourself not getting everything you need, that's why. Sweet. Okay, let's see what BG calls looks like. So let's go console.log BG calls. And we'll hit save. And we'll go ahead and hit run. You may have to go through the authorization process, so follow that. And now you can see that we've got our range of colors for each one of these background items in column A. 
Our next job is to paste all those values into column B. So to do that, we can get the offset. So we can say range dot offset. And now we've got a row offset. So how many rows down or up do we want to start? Now for us, we don't want to go down or up any. So we want to make that zero. And then how many columns do we want to offset? So we want to offset by one. So we're going to go across one to column B. And now we've got our number of rows that we will have. Now we can do, we can get that number of rows by saying BG calls. Oh, actually by going range, get num rows. So it's going to get us the number of rows that we need with that method there. And how many columns across are we going to have? Well, we only want one column, don't we? Cool. Now we can change to, so this is going to generate this new range here. Now we can change to this and we can set those background colors as a value. So let's set values. And inside those values, we want to put in our BG calls. Let's just see how that looks for now. We'll go ahead and hit run. And there we go. So our background colors have been added in. Let's go a bit crazy and actually add in the background colors as well. Now I think some of our letters are going to wash out, but that's okay. We're having a bit of fun here. So let's add in set background or backgrounds with an S. Don't forget the S. And then we can add in our BG holes again. Hit save. Cool, and let's hit run. All right, there we go. We have our background colors here with the actual background color in play. Like I said, this Mysterium one's a bit washed out and the Seven Conf Continent and Forbidden Island is also washed out as well. But that's okay, we can resolve that by figuring out how to get our font colors, which is our next task. Oh, one thing I didn't mention here is we've got an offset here. We've hard coded in the offset here, which we didn't need to do. So let's just copy that offset over and add that in here and hit save. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that one out. All right. So what's up next? Okay. So how do we grab the font colors? Well, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, do we? Let's just grab this entire function here. Hit control C and then just below we'll hit control V. And instead of saying display column BG colors, we'll say display column font FT colors. And is our on offset going to be the same? No, it's going to be column two. Range and sheet name are going to remain the same though. Okay, so what other changes do we need to make here? So this background colors is definitely going to have to go. And this one is going to be get font color objects. Now get font color objects displays something a little bit different here. Uh, before I explain, we should probably change the name of this constant variable. So I've got BG here. I'm just going to select this BG here. I'm going to hit control D to duplicate our changes all the way through to this bottom bit. And I will call this FT for font. Cool. It's a quick little shortcut. So Let's just comment this out. I'm going to select this and hit uh, control forward slash and just see what results come out of this. It's going to be a little unusual. So let's uh, change our run to display column font colors and hit run. Okay, so we definitely don't have our hex colors here, do we? So we've got another object containing more details. So we need to extract those hex colors somehow. So what we'll do is before we go to this set values shenanigans here, we need to convert them to hexadecimal values in the array or 2D array. So let's create a new constant variable now and we'll call this font hex. Put it, we'll make a font hexes, font, font hexes. And then we'll say uh, font. Now, now we're going to grab the font color 2D array, and we're going to map that with some new values. So we're going to say font colors map. And with our map, we need, we'll have an iterator, which is going to be our row. So on each row, we are going to do an arrow function and apply something to it. And what are we going to apply? So we want to return, we want to return a single array. So I'm going to put everything encapsulated in an array. 
So our 2D array is maintained. And then on row, on each row, in the first position of the row, so there's only one position, but we need to identify it. We need to get the as RGB color, that one there. So there's get blue, get color type, get green, get red, and of course, get hex string. So we want to get this hex string here. And we'll select that. So now that we have this hex string, we can display the hex string. So I'm going to hit control C now and replace this font calls and double click and replace this font call as well and hit save. And I'm just going to hit enter a few more times just so you can, things are a bit centered on the screen for you. Not centered, centered. And now let's hit run. And there we go. So on our left-hand side here, you can see our font colors have been added nicely. Okay, so let's go ahead in our last little experiment and combine the background color and the font color together. Uh, it's probably going to be easiest for us to just grab this last function we generated. We'll hit Control C. And we'll hit Control V below. And this time, we'll change our function to display just column colors, hey? Now, offset is going to be three now. So from this one, it's going to one, two, three over to here. And we can keep this here. We're going to put that in. Our font hexes, this is going to change to, we don't want it as a background color now. We want it to set, oh, I did double set here, didn't I? Set font colors, this one here. And that's going to set them as hexadecimal colors. And we'll also want to set our background color, but we haven't retrieved that yet. That's no worries. We can do that. So let's just go above the font color and we'll say const. We can use the same range, but we'll say BG calls, oh, GB, BG calls is equal to range dot get backgrounds. Don't forget the S. Okay, so we've got them. Let's just put. Nah, do we still need it? Oh, you got it. You've got it. Let's get rid of that console log. And now before we go ahead and set those values, though, we need to join our background colors and our font colors together while also creating these font hexes as well. So let's just create two new empty arrays that are going to change. So we're going to use the let variable here. So let colors... Yes, I'm using the O-U-R-S just to irritate my American friends. No, it's just what we do in Australia. So, And then we also want to use let FT hex. And we're going to make an empty array of both here. Nice. And now, instead of using this font colors and map, so we're going to delete this we're going to use the for each method here. So for each row. And now we need to update these arrays so we can put them together. So we need to combine our two hex colors together in a single string, but also keep our font hex color and generate that as well. So that's what we need to do in here. So let's say const ft col so single call here, not calls, is equal to row, what's well, this, isn't it? So let's just copy this, eh? Just copy this. And we can get rid of that now. Okay, so we've got the font color on each row we're generating. And then we want to push that to our font hex, or hexes, wasn't it? It was the uh, plural, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and say, ft hex singular dot push to push it to the end of the array. Now we need to create an array for each row. So it'll have to go inside an array as well. And that's going to be our font call hexes. Oops, we'll start that one again. So ft hexes. Oh, we should probably make this ft hex. Hey, yeah, let's do that. Hex. That's a bit clearer. And anyway, so FT hexes, we want to push to the end of the FT hexes array. So push. And then we each row has to be in its own array. So we need to put that FT hex 
in an array before we push it. And then that's going to add to the end of this one here, for us to display in the sent font colors. And what do we de need to do next? We also need to grab our background colors first. So we'll say const bg col, just singular here, is equal to, and that's going to be bg coles. And we probably also need the index as well as it iterates through this time. So let's uh, go up here and also include the index id x. And we'll put that in, in uh, curved braces in, in brackets here. If you have more than one parameter or argument, you need to put them in braces. So bg col, and we want to look at the index, and it's going to be the zeroth location of the index because we only have one column in the array. Noise. Now let's combine them together and add them to our colors. So we can say colors, you are s dot push, and we want to put them inside an array. And we will use template literals with backticks here. And I will use a dollar sign, curly braces, bg, oh, and then we'll put a space in. We'll do dollar sign, curly braces, ft, col. And that will display the two hexadecimal colors for background and font side by side in the cell. And push that to the colors array up here. Cool, so when we set values, we want to set values now on our colors array. So we'll change FT hexes to colors. And we also want to now add in our set backgrounds with the S. And what do we want to add in here? Well, we can just go up here and add in our background colors, BG calls. All right, let's hit save. And now let's just go up and change our function. Uh, display column colors and now hit run. Oh, FT is not defined on line 79. Ah, that's because we changed it to FT hex. Didn't we? There we go. Hit save and run. There it is. Okay, so now we have our on Divinity Original Sin, we have our background color and then our font color and it's also displaying the background and font color accordingly. Okay, so these can, this can be super useful if you're creating a template and you want uh, users to be able to add in and change colors of a cell and then uh, perhaps have a button to refresh the cells with those background colors that you might use in uh, conditional formatting in other Google Sheets. And you can programmatically bring all this across into a new Google Sheet to create that formatting. Um, there's a, heaps of reasons to have those background colors there. I'd be really interested to see how you would use this in your own projects. So please leave a comment and let me know. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribe. Until next time.